I just wanted to introduce um, General Frank Klotz. He is the Department of Energy's Undersecretary for Nuclear Security and Administrator of the National Nuclear Administration, NNSA. Uh, before taking over NNSA uh, in April 2014, General Klotz served in a variety of military and national security positions, including Commander of Air Force Global Strike Command and Director for Nuclear Policy and Arms Control on the National Security Council, where he represented the White House uh, in the talks that led to the 2002 Moscow Treaty to reduce strategic nuclear weapons. Uh, he is sitting in the seat that groves if we could collapse 69 years <laughs> or 70, might, might have occupied. Uh, so he's our modern day General Groves and I understand he's just as dynamic. So <laughs> General Klotz, welcome. Well, thanks very much, uh, Cindy. That's a very warm and uh, generous uh, introduction, and I appreciate it. Um, it's going to be tough to follow that last act. Uh, just what a marvelous uh, uh, panel to have the opportunity to, uh, to observe, uh, I think, by all of us here. In fact, uh, like uh, General Groves' uh, granddaughter, my intention was only to come here this afternoon, sit in the back row, and watch Stan and Kai and Marty and others talk. But uh, I'm always uh, glad to be able to uh, say a few remarks about a subject of, uh, of great interest uh, to me personally, but also professionally as uh, the director or the administrator for the National Nuclear Security Administration in the Department of Energy. And that's who I'm here to uh, represent, and I hope that, uh, um, that you had a, uh, a productive and an enjoyable time. It certainly was for, for me as well. Uh, perhaps I should take just a couple of minutes uh, to expand on what Cindy said in terms of what the National Nuclear Security Administration is, uh, because we're often confused with uh, other government agencies that deal with nuclear energy uh, and national security. The NNSA uh, was actually established in the year 2000, so as uh, government organizations go. We're relatively new uh, on the kids on the block. Uh, we're a semi-autonomous organization within the Department of Energy, and we have responsibility for, and I quote, enhancing national security through the military application of atomic or, or of nuclear science. Now, uh, this very general job description encompasses quite a bit. Uh, it means that uh, we maintain the safety, the security, and the effectiveness of the nation's nuclear weapons stockpile. And since 1992, we have been doing all of this without explosive nuclear testing. Uh, secondly, we work very closely with other government agencies to prevent, counter, and respond to global nuclear dangers. And by that, I mean the possibility that terrorists might get their hands on a radiological or nuclear weapon or that uh, other states uh, might get their hands on a nuclear weapon. And finally, we also support the Navy's nuclear propulsion program, so we are heirs not only to uh, General Groves and to uh, Robert Oppenheimer, we are also heirs to Admiral Rickover. Now, for all of these uh, mission sets, uh, we trace our heritage directly back to the Manhattan Project. In fact, we still operate many of the laboratories and production plants around the country that were part of that historic undertaking. We have responsibility, for example, for uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. Uh, we also have responsibility for Sandia Laboratory, and as some of you will know, uh, that was an offspring of Z Division uh, that was originally part of uh, Los Alamos. Uh, we're responsible also for the production facility at Y-12 in Oak Ridge. So that's three of the uh, eight sites for which we have responsibility. And I must say, everyone that is, works in uh, the National Nuclear Security Administration and in the Department of Energy and any one of our eight sites 
across the United States, we are all very, very mindful of the fact that we are heirs of that extraordinary scientific, technological, and engineering uh, talent and expertise that was developed during the Manhattan Project, as well as the processes and procedures set up uh, both by Oppenheimer at uh, Los Alamos uh, by, and by Groves uh, within the Army aspect of that. Because as uh, Stan and I have talked about before, th those procedures, those processes, those protocols, those ways of thinking are with us today. They still influence how we do business. So my personal view is it's exceptionally important that we understand our roots, both to honor the accomplishments of those brave Americans of the past, perhaps more importantly, however, to pass on the spirit of innovation and commitment to public service exemplified during the Manhattan Project to successive generations of scientists, technicians, and engineers who apply nuclear science to solve national and global security issues. We, in fact, follow in the footsteps of giants. Now, one of the ways uh, which we are hoping to preserve this heritage is by establishing, working to establish the Manhattan Project National Historical Park uh, by the end of December 2015. I know that's a project near and dear to the heart of Cindy and many of the people who are in this room today. And I believe Jamie Schimmick, uh, one of my colleagues from the Department of Energy, described what the Department of Energy is doing alongside the Department of Interior to make that uh, come true. Uh, our goal is to preserve, to protect, and to enhance public access uh, to the resources related to the Manhattan Project around the country. The particular sites for which we have responsibility, as I've already mentioned, are Y-12 at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, uh, Hanford in, in uh, Washington, and uh, Los Alamos uh, uh, Laboratory in New Mexico. They are of great historic value and should be preserved in order to provide the public a deeper understanding of the events that happened as part of the Manhattan Project. So it's our hope that this park will contribute to preserving the foundation of the Department of Energy and NNSA's enduring nuclear security missions and highlights what is truly an extraordinary chapter in American history. So I'd like to personally thank the veterans of the Manhattan Project who have shared their experiences with us over the last two days for their service to our nation and also to the Atomic Heritage Foundation for hosting this important event. Thank you all for allowing me to participate. Thanks.